You know, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to make the case that Joe Biden has been awful for America. Since the day he stepped into the U.S. Senate and sided with the racists and segregationists and opposed integrating our public schools, he was a leader in that movement. He's been awful for America. He took the Senate Judiciary Committee and turned it inside out, using it to character assassinate some of the greatest legal minds in American history to prevent them from going on circuit in the Supreme Court. In 1994, he authored a bill, the purpose of which was to round up as many people as possible for violating our crack laws. Uh, and you had disparate treatment between blacks and whites, and he was all in and he was all for it. This is a very nasty, dangerous man in so many respects. Today, he has our borders wide open so anybody can walk in, and they are walking in, and you see what it's done to our country. The death of tens of thousands of people with the communist Chinese providing the material for fentanyl to the drug cartels that are making and raking in billions and billions. He's the greatest slaver in American history, whether during or before the Civil War, he's it. And it's funny how we don't hear very much about that from MSNBC and, and CNN and the usual reprobates. Uh, what he has done to our economic system with rampant inflation, and he still wants to deficit spend even more, future generations, how they're going to shoulder all this. I don't have the foggiest idea. Our interest on the debt is now bigger than our defense budget, which he's frozen in place while our enemies are getting stronger and stronger and stronger. He's turned our judicial system, our justice system, into a joke, into a Stalinist-style political operation where he's trying to imprison the former president of the United States where Donald Trump's free speech rights under the First Amendment, equal protection rights under the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendment, due process rights under the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendments, impartial jury under the Sixth Amendment, right to competent counsel under the Sixth Amendment. You can't be in four separate criminal cases, in four separate jurisdictions, simultaneously, and comply with the Bill of Rights of the United States. It's not possible. It's simply not possible. And, uh, and uh, Joe Biden's behind all of it, and I've explained it before. So this is the diabolical person who occupies the White House, who doesn't know ingress from egress, who doesn't know his wife from his sister, who doesn't know Haifa from Hamas, who doesn't know the president of Egypt from the president of Mexico. This is who the Democrat Party is serving up a second time as their fantastic nominee for president. And this is who the ruling class, the media, and all the rest of them in Washington, D.C., and the power centers in New York and L.A. are trying to impose on us. This is the man. No matter how he endangers the American people, no matter how he impoverishes the American people, no matter how he endangers our allies, and is an international arsonist turning peace into war in the Middle East, it doesn't matter, because it's all about power. Now, I want to remind you of this man's record in another regard. We sit back and we watch the Iron Dome in Israel. Well, I got to experience it personally, as did members of my family, as I was there last Saturday, when the Islamo-Nazi regime in Iran, brought to us by Jimmy Carter, another Democrat, shot 300 missiles at Israel. So much praise for Biden, so much praise for the, for the uh, SDI system, the strategic defense system. It was magnificent. Look how fantastic it was. No thanks to Joe Biden. No thanks to Joe Biden. No thanks to the Democrat Party. The Democrat Party opposed Ronald Reagan when he introduced the strategic defense initiative Almost 41 years to the day, March 1983, and General Daniel Graham, the man who was behind promoting it in the first place, they opposed it. They tried to defund it. They tried to prevent it with killer amendments, one after another. On one occasion, Ronald Reagan had to shut down the government in order to get it funded to some extent. There was a piece written by Martin Anderson, a close advisor for many, many years to Ronald Reagan, on June 9, 1986, in the Christian Science Monitor. He said, since President Reagan announced his 
SDI, a 1983 strategic defense initiative, there's been strong and powerful opposition to the idea, most of it from the left side of the political spectrum. One curious aspect of this opposition is that the scientists who raise technical objections and the nuclear weapons experts who detect flaws in the military strategy are, to the best of my knowledge, virtually all Democrats. When you can safely predict that a scientist or nuclear weapons expert who is opposed to our missile defense efforts will more than likely turn out to be a registered Democrat, then you can be pretty sure you are dealing with a political issue, not a scientific one or military one. In fact, much of the Democrats' recent opposition, 1986, to the notion of missile defense can be explained as a reflex action to overwhelmingly political problem that they have. Two prime policy issues have dominated the political debate in the United States for the last 40 years. Again, that would be the last 80 now. Defense policy and economic policy. When either of our political parties gets crosswise with the American voter on one of these issues, it is in severe political trouble. And if it gets on the wrong side of both issues for long enough, it can destroy itself. The Democrats are already on the wrong side of economic policy. When Reagan announced his comprehensive economic program in the 1980 campaign, they, they quickly denounced it. And that includes Biden. For the last five years, they have been searching desperately for an alternative. They have not yet found one. And the reason they have not found one is that none exists. The Democrats made a fundamental political error by allowing Mr. Reagan to stake his claim for the only politically viable solution to the economic difficulties that face us. And he went on to talk about Reaganomics, which they used as a term to attack Reagan's policies. But when President Reagan suddenly proposed a missile defense system for his country, this country, in 1983, he placed the Democrats in an impossible political situation. The Strategic Defense Initiative, these defensive missiles, was a radical fundamental change in our nuclear defense strategy, a proposal to move from a policy of mutually assured destruction, MAD, which relies on the threat of the revenge killing of millions of innocent people as a deterrent. It always bothered Reagan to a missile defense shield, which relies on killing incoming nuclear missiles before they can kill anyone. Morally, the policy of a missile defense shield is vastly superior to mutually assured destruction, and the swift advances in rocket and laser beam technology since we abandoned our first efforts at missile defense in the mid-70s have tremendously increased the practicality of missile defense. He goes on, the Democrats' dilemma is now that for the Democrats to succeed politically, a U.S. missile defense system must fail. For if we do begin to deploy an effective missile shield, the Democrats would have only two choices. They could either admit they were wrong and belatedly embrace the idea, or they could persist in their opposition, which would become more irrelevant with each passing day. Either course is politically damaging, particularly when taken together with their economic policy blunder in 1980. To a significant extent, the political fortunes of the Democrats in the years ahead will rise and fall on the failure or success of our attempts at missile defense. What is he talking about? Power and politics first for Biden and the Democrats all the time. There was a piece written a few years ago in the Dallas Morning News by a member of the Hudson Institute, I believe, Rebecca Heinrichs, 2021, leading up to the 1986 summit in Reykjavik, President Ronald Reagan faced strong pressure from many Democrats in Congress to put a strategic defense initiative on the bargaining table with the Soviets. They wanted him to bargain it away because they didn't have anything close to the technical capabilities to build a strategic defense. And this is one of the reasons we won the Cold War, because Reagan insisted on it and he knew it would bankrupt them. Among the most vocal critics of the Reagan doctrine, they write, and a strong voice for putting it on the bargaining table was then Senator Joe Biden, who said, quote, the president's continued adherence to SDI constitutes one of the most reckless and irresponsible acts in the history of modern statecraft. Joe Biden, an imbecile long before his official certified imbecile status today. Reagan stood fast in the face of that pressure, refused to back off his missile defense initiative. But the Democrats continued relentlessly to try and sabotage it. Here from C.Q. Almanac, 1985. 
Arms control advocates failed in repeated efforts in 1985 to impose substantial restraints on Reagan's anti-missile research program, the Strategic Defense Initiative, which critics called Star Wars. SDI encompassed research on several possible kinds of anti-missile defenses, including laser-armed space satellites. They were trying different techniques. And they finally found one that they relied on. The arms controllers were against it. The peaceniks were against it. The Democrat Party was uniformly against it. Joe Biden was one of the leading opponents. That was 1983, 84, 85, 86. Reagan had to keep fund, fighting for funding. They tried to block even the, the efforts to test different systems. So in 1986, what did the Reagan administration do? They made a deal with the state of Israel because they knew Israel would want a system, would use their technological know-how to help advance the system, and would, in fact, try the system out on multiple fronts until it worked. And since 1986, almost 40 years, the United States and Israel have built what is today the effective missile defense system in different levels. The missile defense system that was used last week that Blinken and Biden praise would not even exist but for Reagan in the state of Israel. And they have advanced missile defense systems. And the Israelis right now are working on a truly super advanced system involving lasers. It's not a secret. You can read about it. Laser systems that would shoot missiles, jets out of the sky with pinpoint accuracy. And they are advancing in this research. All of this was possible because of 1983 and 1986. Can you imagine if Joe Biden had won the day? Could you imagine? This man is wrong in every respect. And now he is literally funding the Iranian regime to the tune of over $100 billion, funding them, telling Israel to take their foot off the gas pedal, to hit the brakes, don't defeat Hamas, don't defeat Hezbollah, don't you dare respond to Iran in a way that, that might actually expand the conflict. Joe Biden has blood on his hands. He and Blinken, these crackpot ideologues that are Iranian special pleaders who believe that they can rejigger and re-engineer the Middle East by weakening Israel and empowering Iran. They have no plan for stopping Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. None. And they are funding it, as a matter of fact. Biden has blood on his hands in the Middle East. He has blood on his hands on the southern border. And if he has his way, the Iranians will get a nuke. And then what the hell are we going to do? Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.